it was about change being possible. When we do pieces that maybe seem kind of a little sad or um, melancholic or depressing, often it's also a way to sort of acknowledge the sadness, but it's also dealing with it to give some hope for the future. Yeah. Staring out to, into nothing almost, uh, he's very introspective somehow. Um, and this is something we experience very much ourselves as teenagers, you know, like you often felt lonely, you felt a bit isolated from the rest of the world, you feel like nobody understands you. But it's also a time where you take this time and you have this time to think about who you are, trying to figure out, figure it out, trying to understand the, the, the world around you. Maybe something we forget sometimes when we're older, right? Many of our works have dealt with isolation and loneliness and therefore they got almost a new life or relevance during these crazy pandemic times because a lot of people could uh, relate to it directly uh, where we had to self-isolate and uh, stay at home and felt kind of remote from the world. Of course, the future is getting uh, new layers of meaning that often happens with a work that you have made like years ago. The new version of the future that we made together with Avantarte is like a miniature sort of the larger version um, that can be hung in a private home, right? I mean, now we're spending so much time on the home, it's a bit more accessible than the large one, that's the museum piece. And also it's sort of through all the followers that Avantata has uh, also reaches into people's home in a different way. There are not so many feelings that we can say are universal, but boredom and sadness are some of them. That's something we experience in this time uh, when we have to self-isolate in our homes. The work reflects that mood that we all experience and share. We thought it was a right timing uh, together with uh, Avangard to launch a, a miniature model so people could feel not completely alone with their own boredom. I think it's a time where you know we have to really take care that um, our liberties are not put uh, under too much strain. You know, we're entering a time that's, that can be more brutal than it has been before. And we have to take care of each other. The beauty about the future is that we don't know what it will bring. If we knew, we would maybe commit suicide. Or we would be really bored because there would be no surprises. In school I was kind of a, a slow learner, so I was one of these like... Uh, problem kids that you have in school. Um, they definitely didn't know what my future would be when I was um, uh, in the beginning of my teen years. It's rather fortunate I became an artist because I think the alternative would have been criminal. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, struggling with my sexuality. Um, definitely. Um, I didn't really know if I liked boys or if I liked girls, especially when we were young. Um, it was still like that uh, in, in the 80s. Now it's much easier, I think. I mean, my 12-year-old nephew identifies as queer. It's, again, it's, it's, it's all good, even in Trondheim in the north of Norway. But I think I would tell my teenage self to relax. Everything happens at the time. <laughs> Mm. Don't take too many advices from uh, people who has horrible predictions of what your future will be. Um, make up your own mind and, and things will develop in your pace. <laughs> no, the future is also about personal feelings, your inner life. And it's important to remember that it's very important to... The future is also about your personal emotions and your inner life. 
And it's important not to demiss these kind of feelings just because the world is burning and we have crazy precedents and uh, big challenges in front of us. We're living in an age of uh, fitness uh, craze and <laughs> pressure from everywhere to have the perfect bodies. This is obviously not a perfect body. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's crashed into this trampoline and stayed there and will stay there forever. The work was part of uh, an exhibition we did at the Whitechapel in 2018. Uh, where we transformed the whole Whitechapel Gallery in London into an abandoned public swimming pool and everything looked really weird and sad. Oh. Again. <laughs> swimming pools have been a recurring theme yeah, in our... Uh, yeah. But it actually all started with a diving board, like 20 years ago or something. Okay. Um, we did a diving board at the museum in Denmark, where we let the diving board penetrate the window so it looked like it was going over the water from that window, but when you came closer, you saw it was like a steep, rocky hill below. And you had, of course, we'd have to break the window to, to be able to use it. Oh, wow. So that was also a bit related maybe to the future, because it's a, you know, a structure that's sort of playing with this area that's between inside and outside. Mm -hmm. uh, like balconies and fire stairs are very much like part of the public's Space, but also seen as part of your private space somehow. Inspired by um, Magritte's The Lovers. Here we made like his sort of two-dimensional motif into like a three-dimensional mm. sculpture so you can walk around it. So we had to sort of imagine of course what it could look like on the other side. One difference to his painting, which is very clearly a woman and a man, is that here you don't really see the gender. And again, it becomes relevant in a time where we all have to wear our masks and cover our faces. It's sort of a destiny for many European countries that were banning uh, Muslim women wearing burqas. Mm -hmm. And suddenly we have to cover up ourselves. Uh, so <laughs> We always found the process of painting a painting sexier than the painting itself. <laughs> In the studio here, as you can see, we more create prototypes and test outs. This is uh, Bogdan. He was sitting in the space uh, there looking um, at you half asleep. And then we had a big tennis court where we had uh, two boys, a boy who had been winning the match and one guy who was like lying down on the tennis court having lost and who was totally exhausted. Mm -hmm. It's again about the not totally perfect body. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of flap behind here on his back. He's more of a, a real person, not an idealized person as you have in many old sculptures. At the moment, we are preparing for uh, a big show that will be um, in Milano in, uh, in the spring. Actually, a lot of our process is like playing dollhouse. Uh, we make models and we move the small miniatures around and that is how we um, kind of prepare our exhibitions. Like the future, when you change the context, they suddenly uh, gain a new meaning. So often when we use already existing uh, artworks, they change their meaning when they get a complete new uh, setting and context. We're looking at the body and the sort of role of the body in today's society, okay. in our digital times, in post-labor times. Yeah. 